Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Welcome back to Combat Sports UK. We're joined today by the number 12 ranked featherweight, Sadiq Yusuf. Sadiq, thank you so much for speaking to me today. How are you feeling after that last performance? Man, I can't complain, man. Any Anytime you can get a win is always a good day. But when you can get a win without any type of injuries, man, it's even better. And I'd obviously, I'd love to speak to you about who you may be fighting next. But I've got to ask you about that last performance. One of the fastest submission victory, you know, performances that we've seen in featherweight division. So... Obviously, you knew that your fight, your opponent was taking this fight short notice. But once you got the victory, like exactly how you said, you wanted to get the submission. How did you feel straight afterward? Man, I felt, I felt, I felt good. You know, I felt a sense of pride because um, I feel like I finally um made my jiu-jitsu coach and my head coach proud. You know, I, a lot of people don't know I know how to grapple. They really underestimate my grappling just because they don't see it often in the cage. But Every anybody that anybody from my area in the DMV knows that I could grapple. You know, it's just it's one of those things. It's a running joke at the gym that I have a, a C a C minus grappling because some um some some type of interviewer or somebody like that rated my 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 grades and they was like yeah his grappling is a C minus. So it's always been a running joke. Whenever people come and visit us at the gym, they're always surprised. They're like, oh man, he really really knows how to grapple. You know. But it's it's I it's just one of those it doesn't come instinctively to me, but I'm happy I was able to get it done in in this fight. And does that mean we're gonna be seeing more submissions from you further down the line now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a fact, man. If the opportunity presents itself, that's a fact. Next year I might I might pull guard, man. You might see me look like Charles Oliveira out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw obviously Zuckerberg actually missed your fight. One of the negatives of obviously obviously having such a short fight. But I'm just curious, obviously, how weird was it there? You know, no it, media. It was, it, it was very strange, man. I, I was actually looking forward to like saying something to Mark Zuckerberg. You know, I was like, man, I wanted to tell him I'll, I'll teach him some private lessons. But it's strange. I, I I'm literally the only fight that I think he missed. I don't know if he went to the restroom or something like. I, but him or his wife, neither one of them was there for that fight, and then they were right back for the next fight. But like that would have been cool to meet Mark Zuckerberg. You know, I don't I don't mind um I don't mind the fact that there was nobody there. You know, like it's 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 a cool opportunity. But then again, that's the that's the, f- the whole thing. You had such a short fight. He probably did just go to the laboratory, and by the time he was back, it was done. By the time he was, by the time he was back, it was over. <laughs> and just finally on your fight as well, how on earth did you not receive a performance bonus? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. You're, 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 you're single to the, to the angels, man. Like, it's... It's it's crazy. I don't I I don't get it. Like I was talking to like my teammates back at the gym. I said, I honestly don't think I could have a better performance than that. <laughs> like, like if that doesn't get me a bonus, I'm just gonna be okay with never getting a bonus then. Because if 30 seconds and being the second fastest um the second fastest submission in featherweight history doesn't get you a bonus, it's like I guess I'm just gonna be bonusless for the rest of my career. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't understand it personally, but obviously you're meant to be fighting Giga Chikadze. That was a fight that was meant to be going down. Is that a fight you still see happening further down the line, potentially? Uh, yeah, further down the line. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because, um, like they said, um, whatever's going on with Giga, something serious. So um, I, I'm definitely not going to be sitting around waiting. So, so it might be something that happened later on in the future. My hopes now is for me to really get that Korean zombie fight. That would be, that would be, that would be legit. Well, I was going to ask about that, but obviously one thing I've got to ask about as well, Bryce Mitchell may be looking for an opponent. If Loyer, if we're not sure whether he's going to be in that main event slot. I've seen you put on socials. You'd love to step in potentially. Obviously, you're fighting yeah. not too long, so you're, you're fresh, you're ready to go. I'm just curious, is that something the UFC have contacted yeah. you about yet? What's going on with that? Yeah, well, um, there was, yesterday was supposed to be the day where they – um see, look at you. You're getting breaking news right now. Yesterday was the day where I, they were supposed to finalise it, so I don't think it's happening. Understood. So, uh, their fight or your fight with him? Um, my fight with him. So I don't know. Um, if I had to guess, ah, no, I'm not even gonna guess. <laughs> but, it guess it, but it doesn't <laughs> look like it doesn't look like you're gonna be fighting Bryce Mitchell, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not gonna be me. But is there still a chance that you could step in on short notice? I know Tapori is also looking for a short opponent, or are you willing to take a bit of time out? And you know, if the zombie fight comes about, is that hopefully yeah, who you're going yeah. for next? So, so- so at this point, it's just me waiting for the um the zombie fight or to see who wins. I'm trying to talk around circles to see who wins um the fight that if whatever fight Bryce gets, I could also get the, the winner of that fight too. 
And obviously you've been with the UFC since 2018 now. You're you're in the rankings. Obviously, if you had, obviously, potentially not looking at that now, but if you had taken the Mitchell fight, it would be a main event. How far away do you think you are from you getting your first main event now? Yeah, that's, I honestly think that that would have been my first main event. And that's why I also called out the Korean Zombie. I feel like if I get the zombie fight, that would be a main event card too, you know. I, if I'm not ready for a main event, I'm either one fight away. And what excites you most about the zombie fight? Is it just the fact you have very similar styles? It's very aggressive sort of fighting. Yeah, what excites very, you most? Yeah, very aggressive, very aggressive. I feel like it's going to be fan-friendly. There's some fights that um, if you match me up with the right kind of person, it's it's impossible for it to go wrong, you know? So I feel like that's really one of those fights. And there's one thing I'd love to ask you about as well. It's actually looking very likely now that we could be seeing a UFC Africa card in 2023. I'm very curious as a Nigerian native i'm curious would you love to be on that card how interested would you be in getting on that yeah man i've been i've been asking for that i'm not even gonna lie i'm kind of a little bit like disheartened with it you know because i i, I thought it would have happened years ago you know and and we've all been asking for it i feel like the perfect time for it to happen was when there was three ufc champions from nine um from africa you know and now um usman's probably gonna be back anytime soon but is is hopefully they get it done, man. It, it's one of those things where I have a lot of family back home that can't get visas to come over here and watch me fight live. I have family that has never seen me fight at all. So like if they if they host one in Africa, uh, I gotta have the whole place packed out with Yusufs. <laughs> but like we say, there's the three champions who are from Africa. It's looking like that could be a huge card. But it's very is it important to you that you are on that card though? Oh yeah, that's a if, if it's I it's not if they make that card and they don't have me on there, I'm gonna start thinking that I did something wrong. It's between gonna that happen. between that and the bonus, I'm like, okay, okay, somebody there does not like me. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm like the only way that happens is if I did something wrong. Like I have to be on that card. It's impossible. But for yourself as well, and not just for yourself, obviously, like I've just said, there are so many African fighters in the UFC now. How important would it be for the whole continent if you do bring the UFC to Africa? Yeah, and, and just um fill the cards up with, with all of us, kind of like they do whenever they go to like Ireland and stuff like that, and they have all these Irish fighters like that. It's, it's, it'll be a huge morale boost, and it would definitely be a, a good spotlight for like the younger guys back home just to like see us fighting at home. A lot of them see us on TV, and that's inspirational, but it's not the same as when you see somebody in person, you know, when it's somebody in person that looks looks like you and come from where you come from. Well, it's like what Charles Oliveira said. I think he he fought on one of the Brazil cards a few years ago, and he said there are so many boys who got you know in contact with him saying I've started fighting because I came to your fight and I watched you, and like it would be huge. Exactly, exactly. That's that's exactly what I was alluding to. You know, just from somebody, it could be a little ten year old kid just because they finally got to see it. They're like, oh wow, it's possible. You know, sometimes when you see stuff on TV because you watch movies and all that stuff on the big screen, it it has this little sense of detachment to where like it almost feels like a fantasy when you're watching it even though you know those guys really exist there's almost like a fantasy element to it but when you get to see the person in, in real life you like you're looking right at them it's like oh they're just human just like me and then uh, the other sense of oh they also come from this place where i come from you know it makes that dream more and more achievable and I'd love to also just ask you about the featherweight division. Obviously, Volkanovski's the champion. He's looking pretty dominant at the moment. How long do you see him being champion? Do you think he's dominant for quite some more time or is it going to be a few changes? How do you view the division at so, the moment? So, so right now, I feel like the biggest threat to Volkanovski will probably be, um, honestly, like someone like Emmett. Somebody like Emmett. Somebody like... Um, let me see. To be honest, Emmett will probably be my, my number one guy. My number one guy. If 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 Loyev or 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 um Bryce can make it to him, they'll make it a lot more. Um, they could show some. It'll, it'll just show something new. I feel like those top guys are surrounding him right now. He's gonna beat them every single time. Uh, so if they guys should give Emmett a shot, so we could see different aspects to his game. You know, somebody a, a good stocky wrestler that's always that's also a, a power puncher. So right now, I honestly think um the UFC doesn't. I don't think they want to push Emmett very much just because of he's a humble guy, you know, he's not a big trash talker, you know, so it's a little bit hard for him to get to fight. And he's also a little bit older. So, but he does deserve, it. I feel like they should give him that fight. I've seen a lot of people say that it could be potentially an interim title between Yaya and Josh Emmett yeah, as well. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing that I don't like about stuff like that because matchups matter, you know, I feel like um Emmett, 
fighting Volkanovski, honestly, might be a better matchup than him fighting um, Yair. I might still pick him to beat Yair, but just because of Yair, so, like, he moves so much, you know, and he's flashy, he's all over the place. Volkanovski will meet him in the middle where his his attributes could shine. And you mentioned the two guys of Loeb and Bryce Mitchell. They're very difficult guys to fight because they've got that fight, that style where they love bringing it to the ground. They're so tricky yeah, to get out so of when that, they're on top. That's, that's that's why I I say they will present something new too because they're they're the only guys in our weight class that are um primarily grapplers. Everybody else kind of fights the same. We're all mostly strikers. They're proficient at everything else, but what we like to do is strike the most. But um, if Loeb and and Bryce are proficient at everything, but they like to grapple the most. If you had got that Bryce fight, how would you approach training for him then? If, you know, primarily a grappler, how do you approach that in training? Yeah, to be honest, I've trained with grapplers my whole life. That's why I keep asking for these kind of fights. Like the first, my first ever call in the UFC was Con Gracie. Like I'm not, it's not something that I'm really worried about. It's something that I'm kind of used to. I just want the opportunity to be able to test myself on the big stage with those kind of guys. And I've only got one more question for you. In five years' time, Sadiq Yusuf currently ranked number uh, number twelve. Where are we going to be in five years' time? Where do you see yourself? In five years' time, man, I'm seeing myself getting close. How old am I right now? Twenty eight, thirty three. I'm seeing myself getting close to just looking for money fights. You know, if I have made my championship run, I've gotten that belt. I might have gotten it or losing out. I've gotten close to it and didn't get it. But then it's time for me to start thinking about money and start looking for my exit out. I'm not going to be here forever. I'm not one of those guys who's just going to keep fighting for fun. I'm here to make make money, make a better life for myself and my family. And after that, peace. Well, I, I spoke to Mike Davis the other day. Obviously, you fought him as well. And he said that he's very much one of those fighters who doesn't actually like the fighting part of it he loves going in he does it because he's good at it is that the same for you do you actually enjoy yeah, fighting yeah me and mike are like pretty similar on like a lot of stuff you know it's like that's i i i, I like mike you know and that's that's the truth i um these days i feel like more fighters need to start being honest about things like that so the younger guys that are coming up don't feel like there's something wrong with them for feeling the way that they feel yeah fighting is like i don't it's it's exactly what he says exactly how he says you know i'm very good at fighting you know and it's one of those things i look at it more as a sport and um martial artists and stuff like that but it's not one of these things where like i just love hurting people (laughs) (laughs) i'm not i'm not waking up like oh let me let me go out and go 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 fuck somebody up today so is that to me it's just it's just competition you know and then just to finish off the dream fight next would be the ufc africa card against korean zombie then Oh man, yeah, it's that's mad unrealistic, but yes, if that, that if, if we could if we could write it out, yes, that would be perfect. Well, I really hope that comes about, Sadiq. Thank you so much for speaking to me. It's been a pleasure to actually speak to you. Really appreciate it. Congratulations on your victory. Somehow wasn't a performance bonus, but hopefully we'll have a few of them down the line. Thank you so uh, yeah. much for speaking to me, man. No problem. Have a nice one, champ. Cheers, and you appreciate it.